All right, we are the Sports Junkies Sports Talk Show, and we're today we're going to talk about uh, the play, the baseball playoffs are coming up, and you know a lot of teams still have a shot to make. We're going to. And, and not to mention, it's awards season, too, because at the end of the regular season, all the awards will be being picked. So today's going to be a prediction show. We're going to predict who we think is going to be the AL champ, who's the NL champ. We're going to pick our awards. And, of course, we'll go into the NFL, too, and make our, make our uh, Super Bowl picks as well. So we're having a lot of fun with this show. I'm, Th- I'm Thomas Bookwalter, your host, along with Ben Baker and, of course, Alex Simon. And uh, great to have you guys, of course, as usual. And uh, all right, let's dive right in. Baseball. I mean, let, let, what, you guys, should we do awards first? Let's do awards first. And uh, since it's the end of the, you know, basically the end of the regular season. And uh, Ben, why don't you pick the, why don't you start? What, which award do you think we should start with? I'll let you choose. Uh, well, let's do Cy Young. And if you're going to do Cy Young, just say it right now. Justin Verlander, Ale Cy Young. Yeah. Then the question becomes, now that you, Verlander gets a sign, 24 wins in a season, potentially 25, He's, it's unreal. Yeah. Now I'm, the question becomes, is he deserving of the MVP? Not to mention he has two no-hitters. Let me just R- say that well, right away. One no-hitter this year and a near no-hitter this year right. as well. So right. does he get MVP? Jose Batista, Toronto is having another phenomenal season, MVP worthy because that team wouldn't be near 500 without him. Granderson, Teixeira, once again, Adrian Gonzalez for the Red Sox. Anybody, especially if you look at Hamilton, even when he's been hurt, he's made a difference when he got back. So, Well, heck, let's just say we'll the Tigers made the playoffs and the Blue Jays didn't. He was enough to put them over the top, and if they didn't have Verlander, uh, you can't say they're at the same me, time. Me. But here's the other part of that is you got to look at division-wise. The Blue Jays, yeah. if they need to get to the playoffs, they got to – <laughs> Not only go over it's a the ridiculous Yankees, division. they have to go over the Yankees, the Red Sox, and, and the, the Rays. Rays. That's probably Whereas a historically the Tigers, good division. Yeah, that, yeah. that division is so stacked that they've legitimately, when baseball is considered realignment, mm-hmm. they've considered splitting the Yankees and Red Sox. Sure. Oh, I, would, I, would, I was thinking about that the other day. They were thinking about um, flipping one of them to the NL East and taking the Mets <laughs> to the other side, whether it be... Take the Phillies to the other side, please. Well, it wouldn't be the Phillies because the Phillies are, would just make that division even better if they no, stayed I, with I the Yankees. Said, yeah. And, and so. how about Batista? How many people said, oh, he's going to repeat his performance this year? And no, I think th- everybody just thought it was a well, one-year I think, thing. I think, yeah. Alex, you brought up an excellent point, and this could be our first topic of discussion right here. Do you think pitchers, because they have their own award, they have the Cy Young, should they get MVP as well? Well, it's such an apples and oranges thing, but I think they have to be considered because they're on their players. You know, I that's, guess you could make a hitting yeah. award and a pitching award, and they have the silver slugger, but that's just for batting average. That's right? And that's yeah. for pit positions. The yeah. key of it is it's not most valuable position player. It's not MVPP. It's most valuable player. Yeah. And as far as I'm concerned, even though they don't play every fifth day, pitchers are players. Pitchers are players. They sure. make as much of an impact on the team as a hitter does, especially over the long term. You look at Verlander and how the Tigers would be doing without him, they would be nowhere near this playoff race right now. Verlander has single-handedly made that team into a World Series contender. You took about his his opposing batting average, 190 over 244 innings pitched. That's that's the stuff of that's, top line closers. He is literally getting over four out of every five hitters he faces out. A guy would be lucky First off, he's lucky to get four at-bats in a game against Verlander from the start. And if he does, he's lucky to get one hit out of those four at-bats. Not to mention, not to mention, he, he's a horse out there. I mean, he's pitched over 240 innings, 240 innings. His whip right now is, is below one. one. It's 0.91 right now. And I mean, that's just insane. The key with Verlander, though, is that he is getting better. You look every single game, he's pitching – up into the one, I don't think he's pitched a game under 100 pitches this year, and he's pitched, I think, as high as a 130. And be, even though he's done that, he gets better. He's throwing his hardest fastball on his last pitch almost every night out there. That's what makes him so good. That's what makes him potentially one of the best pitchers that we could see in our generation for a sure. long time. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, all right. So, would Ver- you, uh, so we know he's Cy Young, right? We've we know he's Cy Young. He's Cy Young is, a, is locked. Alex, we'll start with, is he the MVP? He has to be the MVP. There has been no single player that has made as much of a difference on their team as Verlander this year. If, now, granted, you could say that as a position player, Miguel Cabrera has been a great player for the Tigers, and there's no question. But at this very same time, the Tigers do not pitch as well. They play, they don't even give him the same run support that they do to the other pitchers. He gets worse, the worst run support on his staff. And yet he still is 24 and 5. 
No. That shows you just how great he really is. I'm going to yeah. go with uh, just maybe to do the counterpoint. Uh, I'm going to go with Batista. Uh, you know, you don't hear a lot about the other Blue Jays. And in less than 500 at bats, 42 home runs, he leads OPS by over 60 points, which I would say is the number one category out there in determining who's got the really, who's got the slugging and the hitting. So, you know, his slugging. batting average right. over 300. And, uh, you know, the all around hitting. Who, who else is on the Blue Jays? Off the top of my, ha my head, I'm kind of like maybe Adam Lind and. Mm -hmm. Well, they picked up Kelly Johnson midseason from Kelly the Johnson. Right. Diamondbacks. A solid middle infielder, but not a 40 home run hitter. No, that's no, true. No, he's not in the MVP discussion. What? He was just mentioning him as a member of the Blue Jays. Sure, Honestly, yeah. What do you think about this? Because he's going with the hitter route. Right. I'm going with the pitcher route. We, well, you're the tiebreaker now. I'm the tiebreaker. Oh, goody. No, <laughs> I'm the tiebreaker. Well, you know, it's, it's interesting because I've always kind of thought, well, I mean, Alex made an excellent point that, you know, MVP, I mean, it's most valuable player, not most valuable position player. And, and you know, and, and, and a pitcher is a player. I've always kind of gone the way of, the, you know, the pitchers have the scion. But there's no, but it's not like the, so but there's no, official only offensive award, except Silver Slugger, but that's positions, you know, as we mentioned earlier. So I, I think usually I'd probably go with Ben and say Batista, but as dominant, I think Alex is right. I mean, as dominant, this year, Alex is right, because as dominant as, <laughs> as Verlander has been, the Tigers would be no, and he's, he's just, even, even if he was half this good, the Tigers, the tig he'd be great for the Tigers. I mean, he, he has changed this team into, like Alex said, a possible World Series contender because once you get to the playoffs, anything can happen. Verlander has done that for the Tigers. I think he's the most dominant player in the American League this year. So I'm gonna, for this year at least, I'm going, I'm going to break my tradition and I'm going to agree with Alex and go with, with Verlander as MVP. So we know what T-Book says. What does The Rock say? <laughs> oh, don't start that again. <laughs> so start now that Rock. we've got our AL stuff, <laughs> NL side, um, the MVP in the NL is a little less appealing. There, you know, nobody's really had standout years in the NL, hitters-wise, except for Matt Kemp. Matt Kemp. He's the only guy that's really made a difference on a team that needed it. And even though it the wasn't enough. They need it. And yeah, <laughs> this is a team that needed some talk. And you know, you throw the Cy Young out there, and the Cy Young has eight different people who could win it, just depending. You put Clayton Kershaw right now. I everything I hear is that he's the front runner. If you have, you know, a Dodgers team that barely will beat 500, yet you'll have the NL MVP in Cy Young, Cy Young right. potentially, you know, that just shows you how good these two guys are, that they're yeah. playing with no support either side, well, Kemp, and nobody to hit around him. Kershaw, nobody to really help him out on the offense other than Kemp, with Ethier being down most of the year. Yeah. That just shows you how good these guys really are. Yeah, and you mentioned, you mentioned um, that Kemp, you know, that they really needed Kemp. And I think what we've seen this year is Kemp is really coming to his own. He's grown up as a ball player and as a person this year. Because, you, know, you know, the last few years he was a good player. But he'd always, like, make mistakes on the bases. Or there'd be a, he, he, he would kind of ole a, a play or, or something, you know, running the bases because he didn't seem to care as much. You know, but this year he really grew up, and you saw what happened. I mean, he became dominant, especially like you said, you guys for that out, for that for that Dodger lineup who needed it. So I, I definitely and, and let's he's a triple crown contender. I don't think he's yeah, gonna get it, but he's a triple crown contender. So you definitely have to look at Kemp in the MVP discussion for sure. To me, hitter wise, he's got to be at the top of the list. I hate to say it. I mean, uh, how can you argue against a guy who goes 30-30 and hits 3-30? That's Ryan Braun. But then Matt <laughs> Kemp, 33. 26 and 40 steals, maybe a little better. It's pretty and, close. And don't forget Prince Fielder's in that discussion, too. And yeah, he's taking part of that in Milwaukee. Right. right. Again, the award is most valuable player. Right. Um, the Dodgers would be in the Houston Astro record area of having over 100 losses without Kemp. I'm as good as Kershaw has been, and we're going to get into the Cy Young next. Without that kind of a hitter there to just anchor them throughout the year, as consistent as he's been and how good as he's been, the Dodgers are a 100-loss team, by far, Without especially that. with the rocky season they've had ownership-wise. You know, that itself probably costs about 10 losses for the Dodgers. They should be a much better team than they've played this year, and injuries, too, have hurt them. But if they don't have Kemp in there anchoring them, they're way, way lower than they are. Okay, well, let's get to it so we can get into everything else. NL MVP and Cy Young. 
MVP pick? Well, let's do MVP pick first. We haven't really gotten into Cy Young besides Kershaw. I've, I, well, yeah. I'm, no, I, I'd, I'd go with uh, Alex on Kershaw. I, you know, I'd like to say Cliff Lee's in discussion, but Kershaw, you know, just a little bit better this year, it looks like. And again, it's, this Holiday. award is different or because Holiday. it's best pitcher. You know, there's some legitimate candidates. Kershaw's there. Lee is there. Holiday's there. Jair Jurgens up until he got hurt right. was right there. Right. Lindsay come even. What about what about what about a closer? What about Kimbrell? I think that it's a stretch with how yeah. dominant the starting pitching is in the National League. Yeah, okay. there's okay. The it's not like point. a bad year. That's for, a good point. And yeah. it's just you know, Kimbrell will be the hands down rookie of the year. It's just you cannot take there's away from a starting pick. pitcher. But you know, people have been saying Ian Kennedy and. I think he's a sleeper because if he can do damage against, you know, sure. against teams like he's done, you know, especially the way he pitched here in San Francisco on that Saturday night that really killed the Giants. Yeah. And as you roll your eyes thinking about it, I'm only rolling my eyes because shutting down the Giants' offense isn't, isn't tough. Isn't that but tough? But the Giants had just come. It off doesn't of a, make you a Cy Young Award when you shut down the Giants. Right, but they came off of a big <laughs> win. They had all the momentum trying to go in. And right. he just totally right. took That's him down against Lincecum, right. which you right. rarely see happen with a big matchup like that. Absolutely. And I think um, my MVP pick is Kemp, just because of how dominant of the year. I put Kershaw one, Kennedy two, because Holiday, Lee, and Hamels have all balanced each other out where they might get it based off of the ECB, as I like to call it, East Coast bias. Yeah. Which, <laughs> out here in Santa Cruz, if we ever see anything like that, it's not a big deal anymore. But I think it goes to Philly, even though it's deserved to be out of one of the two NL West guys. Although, Sadly. Although, well, Sadly. Yeah, although I, and when all, whenever you have two guys on the same team, you know they can end up canceling each other out. I mean, Ben mentioned Halliday and Lee. Right. And, and Hamels. Hamels and has Hamels, had a better year than Hamels. Lee. But we should also say and it's not most valuable pitcher. No, but we're talking Cy Young. But, but you're right. But it's I mean, best pitcher. It's best pitcher. But, I mean, look at a couple of years ago when Timmy, when Tim Linscombe won his second. A lot of it, I mean, he deserved it. But also, Wainwright and Carpenter on the Cardinals, they had great years. They canceled each other out. No, no, they don't. Not in Cy Young. Because Cy Young is best pitcher. Cy Young, Cy Young simply, it's not like MVP where Kemp is going to get it because the two other players that are really deserving of which are Braun and Fielder cancel out how valuable they are. Which kind of seems unfair, really. It seems unfair. There ought to be an award the for same, best hitter. It's at the same time, it's understanded because Yeah, you know, that's the way it's been done a long time. Right. And I mean, you're not gonna the way that the awards are established with their lure now, they're not gonna come up with a new award. So now the real question is, is Kemp actually the best hitter in the National League? I would say no, just because hitter is overall hitter, yeah. and depending on where you value your hitter, mm -hmm. I don't think Kemp has the on-base percentage that Braun has, mm -hmm. especially because Braun, with Fielder there, people are very reluctant to throw him, you know, yeah, pitch yeah. to him first. Right. That's a good or, point. Or if you look at it the other way, they're very reluctant to pitch around him, so that's why he gets so many good hits. Sure. And then he has a good eye at the plate, which makes him more concentrated and draws walks better. Yeah, but I mean, at the same time, oh, go ahead. Well, I'm sitting here and I can be snarky and say, oh, well, Kemp's <laughs> on-base percentage was 10 points higher than Braun. But it's like you say, who would, who would be the better hitter if they didn't have Fielder right next to And him? then especially if you put the fact that... No, but that you could, you could you, say right. that Kemp, if Ethier is he healthy, it'd be the same thing with Kemp because he'd have Ethier. But at the same time, you have to put in, just looking at this year's stats is unfair to Braun because Kemp has had nobody around him where teams are just... Hey, let's just throw him the four, and just that helps his on-base percentage. Yeah. But it doesn't, you know, doesn't put factors into this judgment. Well, I think it also, it also just, just you can decide what stat you want to look at because obviously the traditional stats that everyone looks at, average home runs, RBIs. But I think on-base percentage is becoming a lot bigger over the last few years, and that, that's huge. Getting on, getting on base consistently, giving your, chance, your team a chance to score, even if you don't hit the home run. So, I mean, to me, OBP is getting, on base percentage is getting huge. Let's see. I gave my vote. I s said Philly pitcher wins it based off East Coast bias, but it should Which be out Philly west. Pitcher? You could pick any of them. It's three. a toss up. Okay. I, I'm going to say Holiday just because he's had the most consistent year and the most dominant. What are you saying? Sa both Cy Young and MVP, Ben? I think Cy Young really is Kershaw. I think he's deserved it as much as I hate the Dodgers. <laughs> uh, again. Well, this isn't a bastard. This isn't a giant Dodger rivalry show. I so can hate can the go. Phillies, too. I mean, but uh, how could I hate the Phillies? They let us win the World Series last year or something. But 
Wait a minute. <laughs> it's, let us, I wait don't, a minute. Hold on. Let us? Let's, not, let's let not get us. wordy here, please. I'm just us? trying to piss off Philadelphia. Again. Um, but you don't want to do that because then they'll play We better. earned it. Thank you. Good night. Uh, <laughs> Thomas, what about you? MVP, you said. I'm going to go with Kershaw as a Cy Young. Kershaw, Cy Young, who's your MVP? Uh, Braun. Braun? You know, I don't like Kemp the person. <laughs> okay. okay. So All right. Well, and Ty Cobb wasn't a good person. He was a much worse person, and he was, you know. So maybe I wouldn't MVP vote for Cy MVP. MVP. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. MVP Cy Young. Wow. Okay. You know what? I'm gonna have to. I would probably go with with Braun for the MVP, just because. Well, two things. One, I think Kershaw is gonna get the Cy Young, and I don't think they're gonna have, you know, like you mentioned earlier, win or both awards on the same team. Although it's possible. But, but considering that the Dodgers basically did not have a great year, I think I think Kershaw gets the Cy Young. I think Braun will get the NL MVP. Um, but that's not to say Camp isn't deserving or Prince Fielder. I mean, I, I think the three of them, either either one of them could get it. But I'm going with Braun. You know, you could also put Berkman in the discussion. Yeah, yeah, I would, oh, yeah. I would agree. Oh yeah, it's just or way, Votto. Again, Votto. I Who don't think. I don't think that Votto will get it just because he was put on such a high pedestal being the defending MVP sure. that he hasn't lived up to that. I don't think Berkman gets it because Berkman isn't as good later on in the year he as he started. Hot start, yeah. And you factor in the fact that he has Holiday and Pujols around him, and he's going to get strikes every time. So again, again, side and note, Berkman just got re-signed. You could say you know, Pujols started off real slow, and right. it's possible that and the Cardinals Berkman, might have tanked if not for Berkman. If not for Berkman, but Holiday was also just as hot at the beginning of the year. Yeah. So I think that yeah. kind of nullifies it. Yeah. I think I really don't think that Kershaw's going to get the MVP just based off of the fact that no, the mean. people on the East Coast love that Philly pitching. Oh, which yeah. I think he deserves him. I think he deserves the Cy Young. It, I, if I said MVP, I meant Cy Young. I think he deserves it. I just I can't see him getting it with how everybody on the East Coast have been saying, why is Lincecum getting these Cy Youngs? He doesn't deserve it. He's hasn't pitched as good as so and so. I that think East they're Coast tr- trying to do a whole other show on that. I think they're trying to finally, you know, the way the East Coast is and the way the writers are, they tend to be streaky. They'll take a little bit less of a favorite, which is why I think Kennedy has just as good of a chance as anyone. Yeah. yeah. So. Watch out for Kennedy. Kershaw deserves it. Goes to a Philly. Kennedy has 20 wins, right? I mean, yeah, Kennedy has 20 wins and only four losses. Which makes, which is why he's such an appealing candidate. Yeah. Uh, and, and you know, for Giants fans, he's not a Dodger. They have a good <laughs> offense, but right. it's not the same offense as the Phillies, so that record makes it even more right, appealing. Right, right. His ERA is a little bit higher, but, but again, can you complain about a 2.88? Mm, yeah. Not really. Um, now that we've basically given all our votes. Yeah. We're, we got playoffs. We should have written these down. Who wins each league's playoffs now that the teams have been established and who wins the World Series? So who makes the World Series and who wins in that matchup? I say the Phillies are just the absolute dominant team in the National League. If they don't win, it's going to be because they fell apart in the playoffs. If their team, if everybody plays the way they're capable of playing, the Phillies should actually win easily. They shouldn't even go to an elimination game seven or five. They're that good. On the other hand, that's what everyone said last year. That is also true. So I think... The only team that has a shot at bringing down the Phillies has to be Atlanta because Milwaukee doesn't have the pitching to stop the Philly lineup and the vice versa. Philly has the pitching to stop that lineup. And Arizona needs another year if they're going to be a legitimate World Series contender. But Atlanta knows Philadelphia. They've beaten them. They know how to beat them. They can stop them, their offense, their pitching, especially their bullpen. If you give Atlanta a lead and their bullpen guys can give themselves the opportunity to succeed, forget about it. And I like I Atlanta think that, in the first round against either Milwaukee or Arizona as well. I think they're just the better oh yeah. team. The only question that you see with Atlanta right now is starting pitching because Jurgens was has been hurt. Um, but Hudson, is Hudson good. and Lowe are the key. And Hudson and if is just you don't, so good. You, if Tommy Hansen can give them just six good innings and a start in the yeah. NLDS. I think Atlanta. And, and the other thing against uh, about the Braves, Halo- unlike last year, not trying to take any away from last year for the Judge, but last year they weren't. They weren't. I mean, except for George, they weren't completely healthy last year. I mean, they had Billy Wagner got hurt in the division series. They didn't have Prado. They didn't have Chipper Jones. Those guys are there this year. Some of them are underperforming. They're and, underperforming, but, but the, they're there. The key for Atlanta, if they're going to make a run, the player that needs to be hot is Dan Ugla. 
When he got hot, that's when Atlanta pulled away in the wild card. He's kind of he had that long hitting streak in August he did. that ended right. in August, and yeah. he, it was the difference for the team pulling away. He's cooled off. The offense has cooled off around him, and now you've seen Atlanta kind of falter up until the end. If he gets hot though, going into the playoffs, I can see Atlanta going all the way to the World Series. Oh yeah, well, the they thing... would be my pick actually in the NL. Okay, I'll okay. say that right now. Okay, well, the, what do you think? The, the other. Sorry, Doc, if I could jump in for one second to, sure. to compare the Braves and the Phillies. The one thing I like also about the Braves, and, and we, I mean, no one's saying the Phillies, because the Phillies are definitely everyone's pick in the, you know, at least East Coast. You know, you know um, everyone's, all the experts' picks are picking the Phillies. But the other thing about the Braves is that I like is their bullpen. And Alex, you brought that up. The bullpen, they have a dominant closer. They have Greg Kimbrell, who's blown a couple lately, but he has, you know, he's 47 saves. He's been the most dominant closer in the National League. The Phillies, since Brad Lidge's 2008 season, you know, the closer where he was perfect and they won the World Series, the closer situation hasn't quite been as solid for the Phillies as it was that year when, when Lidge was on. Yeah. So I think that, that that could, you know, if it comes down to a bullpen sure. game between those two teams, I think the Braves have the upper hand. However, I will say this. If, Milwaukee, if Braun and Fielder catch hot, yeah. They'll hit their way to the World Series. Well, anything so, can happen in the playoffs. Right. That's the thing with these predictions. They, we don't if, know anything Ron, can happen. If Braun and Fielder can hit in the playoffs, they could they could ride that to a championship. They could. And Milwaukee's first. But as as the Braves proved in the '90s, we proved it last year. Good pitching is what wins in the playoffs. Right. But again, they do have consistent pitching and Markham, uh, Giovanni Gallardo, and Granke. Yeah. That they could really. If and those guys get them solid great, starts, right, yeah. if those guys get solid starts, they could ride that for a while with the hitting they have. Ben, did you want to? Uh, you know, yeah, it, it, they could be. It could be a good first round matchup. I think it's probably going to be Atlanta against Milwaukee. Yeah. That one may be. As you don't ever want to count the Phillies out, they should, based off their record and how they played, win each of these series handily. Handily. But we're looking in a way that. You know, what other teams have a chance to take them down? I think you're still going to stick with Philly no matter what we talk about, right? <laughs> well, you know, see what I'm – when you come into these these playoff pictures, I think the main thing – the main difference between that and the regular season, well, is, I guess you could say, A, how your team's playing at that particular time, but also just the pressure. Yeah. And when you got guys – I mean, your, your, ta- your staff is front-loaded with Lee, Halliday, Hamels, Oswalt, all guys that have been there before, all guys mm-hmm. that are just – Cool as ice under pressure, that's going to be enough to just. And you can't you can't think any of those guys is going to lose their start. Right, and something I was talking to you guys both about earlier is that you know I think what the Phillies have la- this year that they didn't have last year was they don't have they're the, not overconfident. They don't they're have not, that invincibility. They don't have the invincibility fact. Last year they thought they were the best in the world. Right. No one could beat them. They were the heavyweight champs. Blah 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 blah. You know. And then they, these they, guys they, came in. Right, they've been <laughs> the National League champs two years in a row. Right? And they're and, motivated. And, and here you go. Here's the championship hat right here to prove it. Yeah. The Phillies have won two, two well, years in a row. Let's just see if the camera people can keep up. Yeah. Here's the World Series right. champion yeah. sweatshirt here. <laughs> and and here's, the world, here's the hat right here. <laughs> the, the torture on the back. And then, I, yeah. think, I think the audience. Do we all get who won last year? Thank you. <laughs> but, um, no, the, the, the Phillies, you know, they were completely <laughs> overconfident last year. And they, and they thought they were invincible. They, now they know, and that's the reason they went and got 100 pence at the training deadline. That's the reason they went out and signed Cliff Lee in the offseason. They oh, know that they can be beaten, and they pence. wanted to make make those steps to make sure they could go back and wing it again. I, I just think Hunter Pence is a really undervalued player too, playing in Houston all those years, and just kind of the team wasn't very good. I think we're going to see this guy blossom into a star in Philadelphia. <laughs> and, uh, I was wondering about that. Thank you. Jeez, you, you guys. <laughs> back to me. Yes. <laughs> sorry, yeah, sorry. And uh, and Philadelphia, they're just they're outstanding offense, outstanding defense. It's hard to beat. So you're going I, with the Phillies as your NL pick. I'll sure. take, I take the Phillies as well if Dan Ugla can't hit. If Dan Ugla can hit, he's the one difference maker in that, that Atlanta lineup that can get him there. I'll take Atlanta if Ugla's hitting. If not, you got to go Philly. Even with you, Ugla, it's not enough. I think it I is. Think, well, I they're think a good they, team, but they're, they're not the Phillies. They're a solid enough lineup, top and, and bottom, that they just need that one middle guy, and that's what Ugla is. He's the middle guy that will be solid enough. I they what could, do you but I still think the chances are very yeah. slim. Oh, yeah. I'm not, I'm not, no, 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 yeah. I mean, the, you know, and the Phillies are the... But in a seven-game series, and... It won't go seven. They don't have a seven. Oh, really? Okay. 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 What do you say, Thomas? Well, I think, I think I would not honestly be surprised to see 
filling it land in the NLCS, and I think that'd be a great NLCS. But if I have to make my NL championship pick, I'm I'm gonna have to go to the Phillies. I mean, I think I think as much as I like the Braves, and I think Alex made the good point that the Braves are probably the only team now that, in the National League that can play with the Phillies. And I said the, the Braves probably have a better bullpen, but I think overall the Phillies are a better team. And I think so. I think that will carry them just past the Braves. I think it could go six or seven games. And if really, that, to if clarify, that happens, the Phillies, I'm going with the Phillies as the National League champ. The Phillies didn't fall apart last year. They ran into a team that's just not in the playoffs this year. That's so, the Giants. And oh, yeah. they, they, there's they, no they, Giants. Yeah. Yeah. In the, yeah. Now, before I, we go to the AL, and we're going to go to the AL, I want to make one last point. Remember 1993, the Braves were a 103 win team. Sure. 104. 104, correction. Thank you for that. The Giants were 103. Yeah, we had another yeah. <laughs> the, the Giants had The Giants, they just beat the Giants. That yeah, would have been the worries. best playoff series in baseball. But instead, with the two division system and only LCS, the Phillies got the East. The Phillies, as the team that everybody was like, these guys can't beat the Braves, they came up and took that right underneath they did. from Atlanta, went to the World Series. I could see the same happening in reverse this time where the Braves are the team that sneaks up underneath the Phillies. Sports wouldn't be any fun if you always knew it was going to happen. Exactly. Oh, exactly. And that's so, why, yeah, and exactly. That's, that's what makes the AL so intriguing is that the Red Sox, you know, they've been called the team of the century with the type of hitting that they have, and yet they got the wild card. They couldn't even beat the Yankees for the division. And I'm going to take the Tigers because Verlander wins two games a series if you can get one good start out of another guy in the LDS, you get him. If your offense can carry you for two games in the LCS against whoever you play, you're golden. Yeah. Verlander is enough of a difference that he wins well, every start that he pitches in the playoffs. And Alex, you mentioned the team of the century. I mean, just look at this, you guys. Red Sox lead the league in, in, in overall hitting, which is runs. Overall hitting, on-base percentage, RBIs, and are second in batting average. And where's their pitching? Right. Well, which is why if they play the Tigers in the – and LDS, they won't win because they don't have the pitching to stop the Tigers and they don't have the hitting. If, well, they got Beckett. They, well, but, Beckett? But you put Beckett, Beckett, Beckett against. the same as he used to be. And, and, not, only, but, yeah. and not only that, but you put Beckett up against Verlander? No, yeah. there's no fight there. Verlander, Verlander this season alone gets you a win every time. If you look at the Tigers' record just in his starts, not at his win loss, the Tigers have over 30 wins in his starts. But he can't start every game. True. Yeah. So, Ale, I'm taking Tigers. Uh, you know, wow. I, my first instinct is Yankees, but I think the Red Sox are right there, too. I really do. I think that, though, if I would love to see another Yankee Red Sox LCS, that would be insane. Oh, yeah. And you what, get it all the time. What do you think, yeah, though? It would be insane. And I, you know, the thing is, honestly, I mean, Obviously, the Yankees are the top team in the AL East. Like everyone thinks always, and the Yankees have made the playoffs, what, 17 out of the last 18 years. But the, or 17 out of, 16 out of 17, something like that. The thing is, though, we've seen it. They have not won the World Series since 2000. They have Except not, for 09. Except for 09. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. And they, they have, until 09, they haven't won the World Series since 2000. And, you know, and, and, and so they have not made it a lot. In, 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 you know, in the 2000s. I'm going to go with, you know what, I'm going to have to make a pick. I, I say the Red Sox. I think the Tigers are legitimate, but I like, I, I, and Verlander is like Ben was saying. Verlander is the best pitcher in the league, but he, he can't pitch every day. I think the offense for the Red Sox is that much better. And I got no problem going out there with Josh, Buck, with John, with Josh Beckett, John Lackey, who also has postseason experience, John Lester's 15-8, you know, those three, I have no problem. And, of course, Wakefield, who had a kind of an off year, but he still has posting experience, and, you know, he, he shuts people down with that knuckleball. They're almost I, built for the playoffs with that are. strong three and that lineup put right. together. I have no so, problem with the Red Sox going in with that pitching staff, so I'm going to say the Red Sox. So I'm taking the Sox. Red Sox. Both you Sox. You guys also took Phillies. So Red Sox, Phillies, give me a name. Who wins? Thomas. Wow. Do I have to pick one now? I mean, right that, now. That, right that, now. That's tough. Uh, you got ten seconds. <laughs> I don't know. I can't make a pick. You guys go first. I'll come back to me. I like the Red Sox. I think the Philly, it's going to be, that's a game seven right there. That's, right. A, that's a game seven. seven. I th Absolutely. I, mine is Braves-Tigers, and I have to go with the Tigers again. 
Their hitting is better than the Braves. Their pitching is better. Tigers. Well, Thomas. you're sure going to win more money if you put that down in Vegas. Yeah, right. I know. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think I'm doing here? I'm People, listen to me. Bet on the Tigers. They will do it. We don't Thomas. endorse gambling here. Yeah, no, no gambling, especially from a 16-year-old. Okay, no gambling on this show. Thomas, name. <laughs> Red Sox, Phillies. Pick one. All right, I think it's a toss-up. I think it goes seven games. But if I have to pick a team... Remember, give me games, the Phillies. I'll go with the Phillies. Games have but, would be in the National League Park. It would be in the National so, League because we won the All-Star game. I'll that's go with a the good Phillies. point. That's for a Thomas very good Phillies. point. For, for Thomas Bookwalter and Ben Baker, I'm Alex Simon. So long, folks. Thanks.